Welcome to lecture one. Uh, we're going to be covering the energy and computational methods in structural mechanics. And while this course is focused on structural mechanics, the applications of this course can be applied to the area of fluid mechanics, heat transfer, and a lot of other multiphysics problems. Uh, I really encourage all of you to uh, try to achieve the highest level you can. You only live life once. And so what I'm hoping you can do is put all your passion all your energy and that you can achieve the, the, the high bar I'm going to set for you. And uh, today I'm going to start with lecture one and covering the course overview so you can better understand what we're trying to do. I'm Vinay Goyal. Uh, I have a BS degree from mechanical engineering at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez campus. So my first language is Spanish. I grew up in Puerto Rico and I have a PhD in aerospace and ocean engineering at Virginia Tech since uh, I got in 2002. I have an experience uh, in extensive ex experience in structural system, multi-physics problems, and as they apply to aerospace structures. I have uh, experience in the composites, metallics designs, bolted and bonded joints, dynamics, failure modes, and systems engineering. Uh, I really enjoy life. Uh, life uh, only comes by once. My passion is teaching. My passion is engaging with people from all over the world. Uh, and I enjoy basketball, chess, hiking, and I love the beach. And I love food in LA. Uh, there are so many cultures that come together. And it is an exciting area because all the cultures come together in one place. And I really enjoy that. Um, I also work very closely with uh, the aerospace industry and uh, I enjoy what I do. I really do. Uh, it's exciting to work in the aerospace industry. What is the motivation behind this course? Uh, what we want to make sure is that for any physics problems I work on, automotive, aircraft, ship design, whatever I'm working on, I want to be able to make sure that I, I can understand how to design those systems with the highest uh, uh, optimal performance I can get out of those systems. I want to make sure that if something were to happen to those systems from the manufacturing standpoint, I can assess them. And so for that, we use computational methods. Just imagine me trying to solve differential equations, 1D, a 1D differential equation for a very simple domain. Guess what? That is easy, very easy. But now I take that problem and try to solve a partial differential equation for a 3D domain that looks very complex like this airplane. And then, no, you cannot do it by hand. You have to use numerical methods. And so this course provides you the background and theoretical understanding of these advanced methods. So you can then develop even your own codes or use other people's codes to then apply those concepts to uh, developing the computational tools that you need uh, in your hands to be able to succeed in uh, basically solving very complex problems as they apply to the human body, the vehicle, civil engineering structures, or whatever you're trying to do. So the course description, and I have to f stay faithful to the course description. The course description is the very, you know, this course has to do with the variational principles. And it presents a natural means of determining the governing equations, associated boundary conditions and approximate solutions to problems in the structural mechanics, me mechanics and other disciplines such as heat transfer. We want to develop specialized method methods in this course, and we're going to derive those methods using durational principles. And we're going to use those to determine what's going to happen to the structure, what's going to happen to the thermal predictions in the structure. Durational principles will be applied to structural mechanics, heat transfer problems involving solid bodies, and we'll be applying those concepts to problems where approximating 3D bodies with lower dimensional theories, cables, beams, membranes, plates, and shells. Approximation methods uh, will be used. So you cannot solve a lot of these problems by hand. You have to use approximate methods. And so that's where variational principles comes in. We'll be using that to apply it to boundary value problems that arise in fields other than structural mechanics, not just structural mechanics, but fields other than structural mechanics. Since the study of these topics form the theoretical foundation for modern computational techniques, the finite element method will be introduced in this course. So I hope that's very clear. We're gonna 
review first the fields equations of elasticity. I want to, I want you to learn the theory, theory of elasticity. We want to develop a sound understanding on how to select lower and order theories to idealize behavior structures like beams, bars, plates, and shells. We're going to utilize energy methods and variational principles to develop the governing equations for a variety of problems in structural mechanics or other fields. Approximate solutions to these governing equations will be, will be pursued, and then we'll make the transition to advanced computational methods. We're going to apply problems to areas that could be other than structures, like flow, thermal, electric, nuclear, structures. So we could make it whatever you want to make it. So what is the approach we want to take? You have a physical problem, and then I want to take the physical problem and idealize it. It could be a barn beam plate, or we can just be the 3D. But the idea is that you're going to come up with the equations of elasticity that govern the behavior of this idealized structure. And maybe today you don't understand what this means, but that is okay because we're going to cover that. This fields equation of elasticity typically cover kinematics, stress equilibrium, constitutive relationships, boundary conditions. And then we take that information and we can then come up with the partial differential equations for the problem. I'm gonna call this a strong form. And this is the strong form of the problem. And we will cover that later. This strong form of the problem can now, what I need to do is solve it. And one way to solve it is using the finite difference method. That's one approach. Or the finite volume method. But another way to do this is to use var variational principles. And you can do that by connecting it to the internal and external forces, the work done by the internal and external forces. That's one way to do it. Another way to do that is to solve these partial differential equations using right and rich methods. And I'll be covering that, so do not worry. And then another approach I can do is to take the strong form of the problem and weaken the continuity requirements. And I'll be discussing that later, what that means. And then we'll weaken the strong form and make it into weak form. And I will dis discuss clearly what that means. And once I have the weak form, I will then use weighted residual approximation methods like Gerlerkin and petrov gerlerkin And then I will use that and the riley ritz and either of those two methods will lead you to the finite element method. So that is the roadmap of this course. This is, this is the way we're gonna go about it. And what I wanna do, what I wanna do is to take a physical phenomena and I have maybe a solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, thermal conduction, diffusion, electrical conduction. I don't care what I have as a physical problem. What I wanna do is come up with a model that gives me governing equations like here in the center, as you can see here in the middle here. And once I have this governing equation and I have the boundary conditions, my goal is to take that and convert it into something very powerful. Stiffness times deflections equals force. And if I can do that, I have done a mathematical miracle. Why? Because to solve this by hand over a whole airplane is not easy. But if I'm able to take this problem and turn it into linear system of equations or nonlinear, it can be nonlinear as well, then we're gonna be in great shape because this can be solved and you can solve it for any shape geometry. That is the advantage of going with this method. Here, I have a 2D heat transfer problem that I typically cover in the finite element course. Here you have a square. This square has a boundary condition of temperature T1 specified at this boundary a temperature T1 specify this other boundary and a temperature T1 specify this boundary. At this boundary, I'm specified temperature T2. Well, the government equation for this problem is this. These are the boundary conditions. And guess what? The analytical solution, you know, we can find it. It's not, it's not too bad. This is analytical solution and it looks like this. But what if I made the square into a polygon where I made it some other shape that's highly complex? Can you come up with an analytical solution? Maybe not. And so what I want to be able to do is no, I don't want to pursue an analytical solution. I can, but I don't have to. Because in real life, you cannot solve a ear or a human eye or a heart using analytical solutions. But what I can do is to do 
and perform a mathematical miracle. And what is a mathematical miracle? I took this problem statement that's very complex, a growing equation that's quite complex. And then I take a, and solve it over a domain that looks quite complex. In this case, it's a simple square, but it could be a human ear. And I have discretized this domain into subdomains. And these subdomains, I will then solve this differential equation over these subdomains. And guess what? If I do this process correctly and I go from left to right, I'm able to take this very complicated problem and turn it into KT equals Q, a linear system of equations or nonlinear system of equations. And all I have to do now is invert the stiffness matrix to find the temperatures. And once I find the temperatures, I can plot it over the domain. And that's the powerful idea behind fine elements is that I can solve any equation I want and I can do it uh, and we can really solve very complex problems. What is the course outline? The course outline starts with index notation and then I move into the pre 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 preliminary mathematics, sorry for that, vector calculus. Then I'll move into calculus variations. Then I'll move the th to the theory of elasticity. And at the bottom of this YouTube link, I'm gonna provide you another YouTube link so you can look at the theory of elasticity from a little, little bit simpler way from the way I will be explaining this course. The other way is done a little bit simpler so that engineers at the undergraduate level can understand it. So I'll put the YouTube link below this YouTube link so you can look at that. But in this course, I'll go to the theory, theory of elasticity uh, and I hope you will follow it. And then from there, I'm gonna apply variational and energy principles. We're gonna apply the principle of virtual work applied to a bar and order Bernoulli beam theories. Then I'm gonna apply it to Tomoshinko beam and extend it to dynamics. And then we're gonna take this and apply it to other energy principles, like the principle of minimum total potential energy, the complementary principle of virtual work, and we're gonna look at energy methods too. First and second Katsigdanov's theorem, max Betty reciprocal, reciprocal theorem. And then we're gonna look at um, a joint system, a joint systems, I'm sorry about that. And it, within this, do not worry, we're gonna cover examples that cover other areas of expertise. And your midterm exam, your midterm exam, which is gonna come about in three weeks, that midterm exam, is going to have a lot of calculus variations and index notation. Approximate methods will be used to solve these problems. It's gonna be strong from Galerikin, weak from Galerikin and Riley Ritz. And then we're gonna apply those ideas to torsional problems and plate theory. Then I'm gonna to apply it to special topics. We're gonna to introduce you to finite elements, to uh, mixed variational principles, which is even a more advanced technique. A lot of people are used to finite elements, but they don't realize that we have even a more, a very powerful technique that people are not using called the mixed variational principle and can be even superior than finite elements in many ways. But it could be also not as good as finite elements. Then we'll go into stability of structures. Now, what I wanna make sure you understand, and then in this course, when I'm talking about structures, the ideas can be applied to mathematics and it can be applied to soap film bubble problems. It can be applied to any physics problems that you want that has a governing equation. We can come up with a variational principle for it. The course materials for this course, the text and references, uh, all the materials for the course will be provided in the form of a briefing package like this one, paper publications, handwritten notes, and the class textbook, which I had written. And this book right now, uh, will be provided to you per uh, the Zoom, uh, as explained in Piazza. Um, the one thing I wanna point out, this textbook is not required, but it's strongly recommended. The course will cover additional topics, not in this book, like plates, shells. Now we do have torsion in this book, but I may cover new ideas beyond torsion. Additional books that are recommended are as follows. We have the energy and finite element methods book in short room mechanics. We also have the Gelfand and Foreman calculus variations book. And then we have other books that you can uh, look at here and buy for, uh, for a very reasonable price.
So we're ready now to jump in into the idea of calculus of variation. But be before we do that, we have to cover some mathematical uh, background, particularly the use of index notation. Index notation is going to play a crucial role in this course because it will help us uh, shorthand a lot of the equations in a way that we can get to the answer quicker than if we were to write every equation line by line. And so I invite you now to stick around for the next lecture where we'll be covering index notation.